Hello and welcome. We will be talking about the law of opposition and solving equations. This is interesting. Before you start this video uh, or go any farther here, we'd really encourage you to read Second Nephi chapter 2. Uh, some of the principles that are taught in this chapter we're going to apply to our math lesson today. And I, I think if you s read this chapter and understand uh, this, the idea of the law of opposition, uh, algebra and this chapter could become uh, quite easy here uh, for you, or, or or maybe not easy, but you'll have a better understanding of what we're doing. So go ahead and pause the video. If you haven't read Second Nephi chapter two yet, please pause the video and. Um, Go ahead and, and read that chapter, and in your video notebook, what we'd like you to do is uh, write down some notes about what the law of opposition is uh, from this chapter and what you understand about it, and then we're going to discuss it here for just a moment, then we will get to the math and uh, get going. Go ahead and push the play button when you're ready to resume. So there are many good verses here in chapter 2, uh, as you probably realized. I want to talk about a few. Verse 11 says, For it must needs be that there is opposition in all things. If not so, my firstborn in the wilderness, righteousness could not be brought to pass, neither wickedness, nor holiness, nor misery, neither good nor bad. Wherefore, all things must needs be a com compound in one. Wherefore, if it should be one body, it must needs remain as dead, having no life, neither death, nor corruption, nor incorruption, happiness, nor misery, neither sense, nor insensibility. Now this is a, this is interesting. I love this chapter too because it's the Heavenly Father basically, or well, this is Lehi speaking, but he's basically talking about how the plan of salvation was set up. And if you think about it, Heavenly Father had... Uh, it's, it must have been pretty complicated to come up with this idea. He's got billions of spirit children. He wants them to succeed and, and become like him. But how do you set up an environment that's going to make that possible? And one of these things was the law of opposition. Now, a law, laws of God, are, can be applied uh, to every curriculum, uh, to every part of our, our lives. It's not just the gospel. And so... Um, that's that's something really important that we remember. In verse 14 it says, And now, my sons, I speak unto you these things for your profit and learning. Well, th which This is interesting because he's saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Understanding the law of opposition is for our profit and for learning. Uh, well, it, about the entire plan of, of Heavenly Father. For there is a God, and he hath created all things, both in the heavens and the earth, and all things that are in them, both things to act and things to be acted upon. Lastly, in verse 16, it says, Wherefore the Lord God gave unto man that he should act for himself. Wherefore man could not act for himself, save it should be that he was enticed by one or the other. So there had to be this opposition in, in all things so that we could have this this agency um so that we could decide and and make choices in this life um to prepare ourselves to return to live with our heavenly father now we talked about this law of opposition be being able to be applied in 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 all that we do uh, i can write up any word and you can tell me what the opposite is opposite of good oh yeah it's bad the opposite of sweet this was mentioned in chapter uh, in the same chapter. Yeah, you're right. Bitter. Uh, the opposite. I mean, there's uh, there's other ones. Opposite of corruption, incorruption. Opposite of life, death. Uh, the opposite of of black. Well, it's white. Uh, there are opposites in everything um, that we do, and this applies to math as well. What is the opposite of add? opposite of addition is subtraction. What is the opposite of multiply? The opposite of multiply is division. So even in math, we see this law of opposition, and we can apply the law of opposition to help us solve equations. Let's go ahead and, and, and do some examples here. So again, the law of opposition is uh, used for our uh, 
for our own profit and learning, uh, it can be applied in math as well. Here I have a problem. I, it's x plus 3 equals 8. Now, now all of you know what the answer is, and that's that's great. The answer's 5, and, and that's the, I'm not trying to be trivial here, but what I want you to see is the law of opposition, because it's going to help us solve harder problems when we get to them. Here we have a plus 3. Now, if I wanted to apply the law of opposition, well, the opposite of plus 3 would be minus 3. And we could apply the law of opposition to both sides of the equation. We would subtract 3, because that's the opposite of plus 3. And we would be left with x equals 8 minus 3, which is 5. And notice here, we had plus 3 and minus 3. Well, that just cancels out, leaving us with x on the left-hand side. We can do this with any type of problem. What if I had y minus 8? equals uh, negative 10. Okay, here's an interesting problem. We want to solve for y. We want to get y by itself. y is the variable that we're looking for. So it's attached to it is a minus 8. Well, to get y by itself, we're going to have to use the law of opposites. What is the opposite of minus 8? Well, the law of opposites says to add 8 to both sides. We would add 8 to both sides. Negative 8 and plus 8, that cancels out. So on this left side, we're just left with y. And here we have negative 10 plus 8, which is negative 2. Now again, these are very simple questions. And we're going to start out simple. But if we can understand that we apply the law of opposition to problems, we're going to be able to do uh, any type of, of advanced problem as well. OK, so here's a, a couple more. Here we have 3x equals 18. Well, we need to understand what the operation is. When I say 3x, that really means 3 times x equals 18. So we ask ourselves, if we're applying the law of opposition, I would say, what is the opposite of times by 3? Well, the opposite of times by 3 would be to divide by 3. And if we applied that to both sides of the equation, dividing by 3, we'd get 3 over 3. Well, that just leaves us with x. And 18 divided by 3 is 6. Again, we apply the law of opposition. Over here, we have x divided by 5 equals 11. What's the opposite of divide by 5? You bet. Multiply by 5. When we multiply both sides of the equation by 5, we're just left with x equals 11 times 5, which is 55. This is the law of opposition and how it's applied in mathematics. Now, there's lots of other operations. In fact, all math is all about opposites. I mean, there's opposites of exponential functions. There's opposites of square root functions. There's opposites of, there's things called logarithm. I mean, there's tons of operations. You can just look at your calculator and look at all these operations. There's opposites for sine. There's opposites for cosine. And it's just math, all it is is understanding this opposite, the law of opposition. What do we do to undo it so that we can find the true value of the variable? OK, so it's your turn. Go ahead and take out your video notebooks. I've drawn up six problems here that we'd like you to try. We want you to apply the law of opposites to these six problems and uh, write down your answers. When you uh, are ready to resume, go ahead and push the play button. You can pause it now. OK, how'd you do? So law of opposition. We're just going to be doing opposite operations here. Let's see uh, how you did. So on this first one, we have z plus 7 equals negative 2. So we're going to do the opposite of plus 7, which would be to minus 7 to both sides. So you should have got for this one z equals negative 9. That should have been your answer for that one. For question number two, again, we're going to uh, use the law of opposites. Uh, here we have y minus 9. And the opposite of subtraction, uh, again, is addition. So we would add 9 to both sides, and which gets us a, a final answer of y equals 22. That's our answer for number two. For number three, uh, here we have a minus 3 fifths plus x. So again, we're going to do the uh, opposite operation. Opposite operation of minus 3 fifths is plus 3 fifths. So we do plus 3 fifths to both sides. Uh, this cancels out. And we're just left with x equals, we'll just do uh, 1 third plus 3 fifths. Again, you can get a common denominator and do that, but you're allowed to use 
calculator as well, we get 14 fifths as our answer for number three. On number four, we have a m implied multiplication. This is negative three x, so that means negative three times x. And the opposite of uh, multiplication is division, so we will divide both sides by negative three. And we get x equals negative nine. That's our answer for number four. For number five, we have x divided by eight equals four. We need to use order of operations, apply the opposite. So here we have a divide by eight, the opposite of that is multiply by 8, and so we get x equals 32. Our last one, number 6, we have 3 fifths times r equals 9 over 10. So this is 3 fifths times r, so the law of opposition would tell us to divide both sides by 3 fifths. And so we would just divide both sides by 3 fifths, and we get r equals, I'm going to go ahead and use the calculator here, and do 9 tenths divided by 3 fifths. And final answer there is 3 halves. Now there is one additional way you can do this, and you might have tried this using, uh, instead of dividing or by 3 fifths, you can multiply by the reciprocal. Now that means the same thing. Multiplying by the reciprocal is the flipped of that fraction. So we would multiply both sides by 5 thirds. But please note that that gets you the exact same answer. So both ways work. Our answer there is r equals 3 halves. OK, well, thanks for joining us for section 2.1 and 2.2. You can continue on to the assignment. If you need additional help, make sure to contact the tutor center or contact your teacher. We'd love to help out. So the law of opposition, we learned that addition, the opposite of addition is subtraction. Opposite of subtraction is addition. The opposite of multiplication is division. And the opposite of division is multiplication. And we learned that we can solve all these problems uh, pretty quick. It's just minus 4 to both sides. Here we get x equals 4. Here we would add 3 to both sides, so I get x equals 5. Here we divide by 4 because it's the opposite of multiplication. And we get x equals 4. And, and if we have division, the opposite of division is to multiply. So we get x equals 63. Now, well, that's great. We learned that in the last section. The question is, what if we have a problem that has multiple parts to it? For example, uh, let's look at uh, something like this. 3x plus 6 equals 18. Now, we call this a multi-step problem because not only does it have addition in it, it's got an addition sign in it, but it's also got multiplication. So there's two steps. This is a two-step problem uh, that we'll need to use the law of opposition on. One of the biggest uh, questions that or concerns that comes up is, what do we do first? We're used to looking at PEMDAS, and we we say, oh, OK, well, it's, it's multiply, divide comes first, then addition and subtraction. However, when we're solving problems, when we're looking for this x value, we're going to be working backwards, because once we get an answer, we want it to work when we go forward. Does that make sense? In other words, when solving a problem, we do PEMDAS backwards. So the first thing we're going to want to do is addition and subtraction. Then we'll take care of multiplication and division after that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. We're going to go ahead and undo the addition first. So the opposite of add 6 would be subtract by 6. When we do that, we're left with 3x equals 18 minus 6 is 12. We then would use the law of opposites to undo the multiplication here by dividing by 3. The opposite of times by 3 is division by 3. And we get our answer, x equals 4. OK, so let's look at a couple more of these multi-step problems. Uh, I've written two more on the board here. Let's go ahead and work on solving these. Uh, first thing, again, we do is is we do the opposite of addition and subtraction. So here we have a minus 7. To undo that, I would add 7 to both sides. Adding 7 to both sides get me, gets me 17 over here. And over on the left side, we're just left with x plus 4, because the 7 and the negative 7 would cancel out. My last step, then, would be to multiply by 4. That's how we undo division. This is divide by 4. So we undo divide by 4 by multiplying by 4. And we get x equals 68, 17 times 4. Great.
Let's look at this one here. Here, uh, things are a little reversed order, but uh, this just means plus 13. So, um, in fact, if you really wanted to rewrite it, you could. You could rewrite it as negative 2t plus 13 equals 18. There's nothing wrong with rewriting it. So uh, what we want to do is go ahead and undo the plus 13. So we're going to minus 13 to both sides. When I do that, I'm left with negative 2t equals 5. So now I have a times by negative 2. To undo times by negative 2, we're going to divide by negative 2. So we divide both sides by negative 2. And we're left with t equals negative 5 halves. OK, great. Let's have you guys try some. OK, here are four problems, multi-step problems, that we'd like you to go ahead and try. Apply the law of opposition to them. Go ahead and pause this video and push the play button when you're ready to resume to check your answers. OK, great. How'd you do? Hopefully you did well. We're going to go ahead and uh, look at this problem, this first one here, number one. We're going to use the law of opposition. So. First of all, we're going to start right here. The opposite of negative 9 is to add 9 to both sides. We'd be left with negative 4x equals 20. The last step then would be to divide by negative 4. And we would get x equals negative 5. That's what 20 divided by negative 4 is. OK, great. Let's look at number 2. The opposite of plus by 4 would be minus by 4. So we minus 4 to both sides. We'd be left with 3 halves x equals 2. We then could do a couple things here. We could either divide, because it's 3 times, I'm sorry, 3 halves times x, the opposite of times by 3 halves would be divide by 3 halves. Or you could multiply by the reciprocal. We talked about that in the last lesson. Um, however you want to do it, I'm going to go ahead and this time multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal is 2 thirds. So I multiply this side by 2 thirds, which is the same as dividing by 3 halves. And so x equals 4 over 3. That would be our answer. Um, yes, you could, if you wanted to, simplify this fraction to 1 and 1 third. That's all right as well. Some of you may have done that. OK, good. Let's look at this one here. I've got to do the opposite of plus 5. The opposite of plus 5 is going to be minus 5 to both sides. So I'm left with x over 3 equals 2. I then am going to undo the divide by 3 by multiplying by two, 3 to both sides. And so x equals 6. Another thing before I move on to the other one is a cool thing about algebra is you can check your answers. Uh, you can actually take any of these answers, plug them back into the original problem, and make sure that you get what uh, make sure that the equation works. For example, if I took this negative 5 and plugged it in right here, well, we would have negative 4 times negative 5 minus 9 equals 11. We would do negative 4 times negative 5. Well, that's positive 20. And 20 minus 9 equals 11. And that is true. 11 equals 11. So you can always check your answers. That's another important thing about algebra is that you can plug them back in to see if they work. OK, so what about this number 4? Now, I didn't teach this yet. Uh, this was an introduction to move into our next uh, part of the video. A couple ways you could do this. You could just go ahead and distribute the 2 in. Hopefully, that's what you did. If you did that, you'd get 2x plus 2 equals 8. OK, then we could use the law of opposites from here to continue. We could minus 2 to both sides, which would get us 2x equals 8 minus 2 is 6. We then would divide both sides by 2 to get x equals 3. So when you have parentheses in a problem, make sure to distribute first. You would distribute it in first, then use the law of opposites to solve the problem. 